Breakthrough Week, we are going to give you the tips, tools, and resources you need to confidently solve your clients' health issues and grow your career as a health coach or professional. This week, we are going to invite you to our webinar that is happening. So if you are an aspiring health coach, make sure to drop the word gut into the chat and we are going to send you that link. You don't want to miss it. It's going to be all about the gut and we're really excited to have you. So this week, um, I have a substitute teacher with me this week. So everybody welcome Jen Maleka. She is here to join us this week. How are you, Jen? I'm doing fantastic. It's nice and sunny here in San Diego. Uh, would love to know where some of our viewers might be watching us from as well and what the weather's like there for you guys. Typically here in San Diego during May, we have something called May Gray, which means, yes, I know San Diego is supposed to be sunny all the time, but May and then June gloom are our two cloudiest kind of months out of the year. And it's actually like gorgeous outside today. So it's an awesome Tuesday here in San Diego. That's awesome. So I am in New Mexico and it's hot. Um, usually it's, oh no, Jen, where'd you go? You jumped off. Hold on. We are going to wait. We're going to, oh, you disappeared for a second. You're back. All right. I was like, what happened? Yeah, I'm fixing you. Okay. okay. Jen's back. I'm back. <laughs> I don't know what happened, technical issues. But anyway, I'm in New Mexico and it's really super hot and it's usually super, super windy right now. So today is really a gorgeous day. There's no wind. So that is awesome around here too. So where's everybody joining us from? Yeah, let us know and, and let us know what the weather's like for you guys there too. Because actually, you know, climate and environment is a huge contributing factor to what we're going to be talking about today, right? Right. So today we are going to be talking about how gut bugs and SIBO are really more in line with metabolic chaos. So they're not necessarily the cause. It's more of the metabolic chaos that's going on. So we're going to talk about how all that happens. Yeah. Have you talked much, Piper, in some of the Health Coach Shit Tuesdays about what metabolic chaos is exactly for people? So Reed has talked about it, um, but I would love to hear you talk about metabolic chaos because I think sometimes it's great to get a different kind of perspective um, and working in the field as an FDN. So why don't you tell us more about metabolic chaos? Yeah, because it's a it's definitely a term that we have coined within our functional diagnostic nutrition training and what we use within our community. But I just think that some people out there might say, oh, that sounds really cool, but I don't really know what that means exactly. And so I think the simplest way to describe metabolic chaos is when there are complexities within one's metabolisms or metabolic processes that result in some of the health main health complaints or health issues that they're having. So Reed, I know, has done a really great job before talking about the um, showing like the brain body diagram that we talk about in the course and through our training and how symptoms are the last thing to show up in a dysfunctional state. And so therefore, that is kind of a sign of metabolic. Well, that is not kind of it is a sign of metabolic chaos is that um, we have multiple multiple contributors to what is going on in the body that are creating this chaos within the metabolic systems that then are showing up as symptoms for people. And this is where we say, like, we may never know what the root cause is exactly, but we can have a positive effect upon it. And we also know that the root, there is more than one root cause. So if we think about that definition of metabolic chaos again, that is when there are, you know, mul like multiple complexities within the metabolic process, it's not isolated to one system of the body or one area of the body. Um, it is multiple things that are going on. And that's kind of what we can discuss today too about SIBO and just gut bugs like parasites, bacteria, yeast overgrowth is, you know, they are a contributor to and a result of metabolic chaos, in fact. Right. Absolutely. And I love that explanation. And I think it's great to hear that explanation from other people because um, Reed is very technical and in-depth. And so it's great to hear that. Um, so what has been your experience with SIBO and gut bugs and metabolic chaos? Yeah. 
Um, well, this is perfect timing because I just did a results review session with a client of mine and I have another one coming up today. And both of them on their stool sample test, th their stool sample tests were lit up like a Christmas tree, as I like to say. So they had multiple um, positives on their stool pathogen test for different types of bacteria, yeast overgrowth, parasites, and then other insights that we get on um, the, the GI map, Diagnostic Solutions GI map is one of our favorite tests to run as FDNs. And, uh, you know, the question is, well, well, why or how do they have those things, right? Like, what is the, what's contributing to that? What makes them a good host for that? And I have worked with a few clients as well who've had SIBO, my husband being one of them. Wow. And, um, you know, I'll just give you a little bit of background about his case specifically because, um, he had multiple GI pathogens. And if you aren't familiar with the term pathogen, pathogen is just an umbrella term that I'm going to use that encompasses parasites, bacteria, and yeast overgrowth within the gut, basically. And so he had multiple pathogens when we first started our work together. I became an FDN back in 2012, and he was my guinea pig as I was going through the program, essentially. <laughs> and um, we had to go through, you know, three different protocols or herbal supplemental protocols for H. pylori. And H. pylori is a type of bacteria. It can be a pretty nasty bacteria. It's linked to stomach ulcers and skin cancer um, going on in the GI tract. And it was really hard for him to get rid of H. pylori. And his case was kind of unique because with other clients, we can do one protocol of H. pylori and it kind of wipes it out. It's good. So the question really came up, well, why, why is he having such a hard time eradicating this? And in addition to that, we did some SIBO testing and found that he did pet test positive for SIBO specifically. And so he was doing all the right thing. He was doing a lot of the right things though. So this is going to really highlight, I think what we're going to, what we're talking about here is, you know, he was cutting out the inflammatory foods, for example, he was he had gone gluten free and mostly dairy free, he was going to bed at an earlier time, like supporting um, better sleep routines and natural circadian rhythms. And we were working on balancing his hormones. Um, we had done a food sensitivity test, eliminated some of those food sensitivities. Uh, we were removing toxins out of our environment. And I'm naming off all of these things, because all of these things are contributors to metabolic chaos and also are what make you a good host for pathogens, gut bugs. And so, you know, he had been doing all these things to support his body better. And when H. pylori kept reoccurring and then also SIBO uh, came up, we really had to like explore, well, what is making him a good host for this? And at the time he was working in a very stressful job and he was traveling across different time zones, um, which environment plays a huge role in our health and our susceptibility to gut bugs, essentially, in a couple of different ways. So for him, you know, traveling across different time zones, traveling internationally, you're exposed to different types of pathogens in different areas that you can then pick up, right? And then on top of that, when we're traveling across different time zones, um, that is stressing our, our circadian rhythm, you know, our cortisol rhythm, our natural hormonal balance is putting stress on the system, which can then create HPA access dysfunction. And on top of that, there's the mental emotional stress that he was experiencing. And so we really had to have an honest conversation about his lifestyle and um, his work style and what was happening. And, and once we started to address those things, guess what? He cleared the H. pylori and he resolved the SIBO as well. So that sheds some light just on those, you know, different factors that are contributors to, you know, gut bugs. And, and when you see something like that come up on a stool sample test, we really need to look at the whole person, like we say in FDN and correlate those results back to the person and not treat the test results, but really understand how did this person get this in the first place? Because you don't just wake up one day and your body's like, I'm going to decide to have parasites today. <laughs> Woo. Yeah. So let's dig in a little bit about SIBO and what SIBO is, because I think people hear SIBO. Well, what is SIBO? What, what is that? Yeah, and I'll just, you know, pop in here and say I see a couple people commenting with our word gut on here. So if you guys do want to learn about this in 
more detail, Reed and I are actually going to be co-hosting a webinar next week, all about antigens, pathogens, and restoring, you know, the gut health. So you can get a full training on this um, next Wednesday in our webinar. If you drop that word gut, then you'll get a special invite to attend that webinar with us. So back to SIBO. Uh, SIBO stands for small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. So it's very, you know, the acronym and what it's called is very indicative of what it is. It means that you have bacterial overgrowth in the small intestine. Um, and typically, you know, we'll have bacterial overgrowth more commonly in the large intestine, but when um, bacteria or yeast or parasite overgrowth has gone on for so long in the large intestine, it can then migrate and move up into the small intestine. And there are some other um, reasons behind SIBO, like if you have faulty or leaky valves that don't close very well through the digestive system, um, that can make you susceptible to, you know, occurring, accruing something like SIBO as well. But that is a very small percentage or um, uh, of the population that has something like that going on specifically. And so it really comes down to kind of this bacterial overgrowth system wide, like in the body, essentially, um, if we think of it from that perspective, because when you have bacterial overgrowth or yeast or parasites that are going on in large intestine, you can actually have those things systemically mm -hmm. as well too. Absolutely. And, um, you know, that was kind of one of the things that was a real factor with my son was, you know, we had all this overgrowth going on in the gut, but it definitely affected his brain. It wasn't just, you know, digestive issues. It was full body, full blown issues. So it's definitely about addressing that entire spectrum of metabolic chaos. Yes, definitely. And, you know, if you're, if you're kind of new to SIBO, some of the I guess most common signs of SIBO would be, um, or probably the one, you know, telltale sign of SIBO is typically when somebody when somebody eats something, they um, they get very bloated. Like uh, people will report that they look like they're six months pregnant after mm -hmm. eating, and it's usually pretty immediate after eating as well too. And so, uh, you know, that is a result of that bacteria then feeding off of some of the foods and things that are happening and creating gas. And that's one of the ways that we actually test for SIBO is by doing a breath test to see what type of, you know, gas is being produced in the, in, in the digestive system to understand if uh, and SIBO is present and then also what type of SIBO it might be because there are a couple different types depending on the gas that's being produced. So how, how do health coaches who are struggling really start to address the metabolic chaos with their clients? Yeah, and really address SIBO, right? And address the parasites mm -hmm. and the bacteria and the yeast overgrowth because um, it's, you know, I've had a number of clients come to me and say, well, I have been diagnosed for SIBO or I've been treated with SIBO or I've been diagnosed for candida or treated with candida um, for candida. And uh, what happens is usually over time, their symptoms reoccur because the metabolic chaos hasn't actually been addressed. And as functional diagnostic nutrition practitioners, we don't diagnose or treat anything specifically. We treat everything non-specifically in a sense. And so again, going back to the concept of metabolic chaos and how metabolic chaos sets you up for something like SIBO and gut bugs is that metabolic chaos is where we have, you know, complexities within the metabolic process that are, um, that are contributing to the symptoms at play. So for example, if you um, have adrenal dysfunction, or if you have a thyroid imbalance, or if you are not metabolizing carbohydrates, uh, very well, or if you have a congestive liver and you're not detoxifying really well, and so you have a buildup of toxins that are happening in the body, these are all types of contributors to metabolic chaos and some of those complexities that we're talking about um, that then ultimately create a domino effect or a cascade within the body, creating more complexities. So if we think of something like you know, HPA access function, right? So mm -hmm. with HPA access, the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal access function, if that is dysfunctional, it can then create a domino effect on the thyroid. So thyroid is another great example of 
you know, is thyroid the problem or is HPA access the problem? Because did the problem originate with the thyroid or did it originate with the HPA access? And we may never know where it originated and what the quote unquote root cause is, but we know that if we um, address the whole body and all systems to bring them online, those things will be resolved ultimately, right? So in the case again of something like SIBO or parasites, bacteria, yeast overgrowth, we need to understand what's going on in the entire body that makes somebody a good host for those things. What is contributing to the metabolic chaos that is suppressing their immune system, that is wearing down the intestinal lining, um, that is um, negatively impacting the balance of beneficial bacteria in the gut that would normally fight off you know, some of this negative bacteria and parasites and things that are happening as well too. And so with metabolic, with this understanding of metabolic chaos, it's really kind of liberating because you're not chasing after um, test results or you're not chasing after solutions that end up not working and going through what we call that process of, of the cycle of trial and error. We really zoom out and we look at the whole picture and say, okay, we need to address diet rest exercise, stress reduction. And when we say stress reduction is a really big, um, big umbrella because it's mental, emotional stress. Like if you're feeling mentally and emotionally st stressed, that can create, um, your body will then produce negative biochemicals and biofilms that make it easier for these gut bugs to proliferate. But stress can also be toxins that are in your environment that are burdening the body. Um, it can also be physical stress. So if you have tight bone or tight muscles or bones that are on, out of alignment that are creating a physical stress on the body, that can create to or contribute to overall stress and the metabolic chaos concept as well. Traveling across time zones, um, like I gave the example earlier with my husband. And so when we want to look at the test results and then we want to look at the person and, and assess, okay, what are all of the things that are going on in their lifestyle that are contributing to metabolic chaos, and that would be physiologically as well as just their lifestyle habits and routines, and then how do we start to eliminate those contributors to the chaos in order to restore health and balance to the body, essentially. And that's how we get rid of gut bugs. You know, when we're eating an anti-inflammatory diet and the right ratios of protein, carbs, and fats for our body, and we're getting optimal rest, and we're exercising according to what our body needs, and we are mitigating all of the stressors, and by the way, also supporting with supplements that help to restore the intestinal lining, that help to bring things back in balance and help to maintenance them over time, that's when we're able to, like if we come across something like H. pylori um, or parasites in our foods or in other areas, our body should naturally be able to fight those things off um, and move on. And it shouldn't actually become, shouldn't be able to become a problem basically. So really essentially we want to work with clients to get their whole body back in balance. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yes, we do. <laughs> see my little puppy in the I background? Say, I see that puppy back there. <laughs> Run away puppy. Um, yes, essentially we want to get the whole entire body back in balance. And this is where you know, some of those cases of people that have come to me with they've got SIBO um, or they have candida, what typically has happened is that, you know, the person that they, people that they have worked with have been treating the symptoms. So they've been giving them supplements or medications for SIBO or candida um, and maybe even oftentimes like altering their diet, but they're not addressing their mental emotional state. Um, they're not addressing their sleep habits. They're not addressing possible toxins that are in their environment that are contributing to this, um, you know, suppression of the immune system and and this increased vulnerability for these types of, of bacteria and gut bugs to, you know, again, proliferate within the body, basically. Yeah, I have a client right now. Um, I rarely work with older individuals, but he's the grandfather of one of my clients. So I'm working with this older gentleman, he's 75. He has been dealing with this similar situation for 30 years. And it's been that trial and error where they're just treating the candida with whatever prescription. And he's like, I just, I need it to go away. I'm so stressed out about it. So then that stress contributes 
even more to the metabolic chaos that he's feeling. So that it's been a very educational process to teach them about. It's not just that symptom. It's about, you know, what are you cooking on? What are you eating? What are you, you know, what air fresheners are you spraying in your house? It's, you know, all of those factors that are really going into it. How well are you sleeping? Mm -hmm. Exactly. And again, like I have, you know, yesterday and today, I have these two perfect clients that kind of align with this. And again, you guys, if you are a health coach out there, a health professional that's finding this fascinating and you want to learn more about FDN and, and how we address gut bugs, drop the word gut and we'll spend, send you a special invite to the webinar that Reed and I are hosting next week that's gonna dive into greater detail about all of this for an entire hour. We're gonna answer all your questions on there. But, you know, so two ask, you know, these two clients are very similar but different. So both of them came back, as I mentioned earlier, with their stool sample test lit up like a Christmas tree, mm -hmm. positive for all these things. Well, the gentleman that I worked with yesterday, 60 years old, we've actually worked together we were reviewing his test results from like 2017. So we've worked together for a really long time. And he has made, in the beginning, he made like a ton of progress and was feeling better and like had a pretty clean stool sample test. And then he's had these like re repeated digestive issues pop up. And last night we had to have a really honest conversation, Piper. Like I basically told him at this point in time that he needs to consider taking a sabbatical from his job or taking an extended vacation or thinking about a career change. Because the reality is, is that we have addressed all of the metabolic chaos factors. He's eating an anti-inflammatory diet. He's actually eating a modified um, autoimmune paleo diet. He's taking a number of supplements and he has over time to heal his gut. Um, we've done a bunch of detoxification work. Uh, he's done work to rebalance his hormones. Um, his Actually his food sensitivity test came back fairly clean, I would say, like he didn't have any highly reactive foods. He had some moderately active foods, but nothing that was, you know, really glaring overall. But the, the looking at his test results, so his HPA axis dysfunction was off the charts. His metabolized cortisol was through the roof versus a year ago, it was actually within normal range. Mm -hmm. And then his cortisol patterns were very dysfunctional, like really high outside of normal range too. So those give us a lot of clues about stress and inflammation that's been going on in his life, right? And then when we look at that in comparison to a stool sample test where now he's got reoccurring H. pylori, multiple bacteria, parasites, I was like, you know, client, I'm gonna call him Dave, him, him Dave. Um, just to, that's not his real name, but I just need a name to say, I was like, Dave, we really need to look at this. Like based on the fact that you've eliminated toxins, you're doing all of these other things. And also knowing that his work stress has been accumulating over time. It's a constant thing that we talk about and a problem. And on top of that, you know, the whole Corona situation, he did have a, a traumatic family event happened in January, but before January and all this went down in December, he got a, like a stomach bug and he was wiped out for three weeks. And I was like, with all the things that you do to support your health, um, you should not be getting sick and you shouldn't have these type of te test results. So we need to address the elephant in the room, which is basically your, your work. And what is it doing to your health? And is it worth it? You know, and he's actually at an age where he qualifies for retirement. Um, so that's what we, we just had a really honest conversation and that's what's so cool about the testing that we do. And when we really look at the whole person is that I'm not, I'm not just saying, here's another round of supplements right. and go see your doctor about this. I'm like, this, this is going to continue to reoccur and happen if you don't address the stress and what's going on in your life. And then the client that I'm meeting with today that also had a lit up stool sample test, um, she just discovered mold in her house. And again, she's like, she, you know, they have a sauna, she uses a castor oil pack, like you know, she's doing a lot of the right diet things and the right sleeping things. And for her, it's very much environmental, um, but it's also, there's a lot of emotional stress. So that's gonna be the conversation that I'm gonna have with her today as well, is that, you know, this is a result of environmental stress, but it's also a result of mental emotional stress because she's got a couple kids, she's a mom, as most moms do, she tends to take on a lot and want to do it all herself. And, you know, she really needs to probably just take care of herself at this point in time. Luckily, her kids are a little bit older. So I think she's got a little bit more flexibility to do those things. 
And really when we see something like SIBO or parasites or bacteria or yeast overgrowth, again, that is a clue that there's metabolic chaos going on and we need to understand what all the contributors are to metabolic chaos in order to truly resolve what's going on in the gut. Because if you just do supplements or diet, but you don't address the physical stress, the environmental stress, the other contributors to metabolic chaos, it's just going to reoccur and come back. And we want to be the last person that somebody needs to see in order to feel better and resolve these main health issues that they're having, right? Right. And I, that's really what sets FDN practitioners and health coaches apart from everybody else out there is this unique perspective on the metabolic chaos, on healing the whole body and looking at the big picture and not just that narrow minded view of a symptom or, or two. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Like when you say, I'm wearing my blue blocker glasses today. This is actually something I talked to the client about because now that he's working from home, his screen time has increased with coronavirus. And I was like, well, that could be a contributor to metabolic chaos. Is it what's causing these huge spikes in your cortisol and all these gut bugs? It's not the direct correlation to that, but it is a contributor to the overall dysfunction that's happening. So he's gonna be getting some blue blockers <laughs> as well. And um, you know, starting to, to pay more attention to some of those things. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Jen, for being the substitute teacher today. Do you have any tips or tools you want to share with everybody before we hop off for the day? Yeah, I just like to um, share like one of the things that I like to say about us Piper's functional diagnostic nutrition practitioners is that um, and functional health coaches is that we are in the business of making the impossible possible. So when those clients come to us and say like, I've had SIBO, I've had candida, I've had these things repeatedly, um, or they keep coming back with symptoms, like that's where we get to make the impossible of what they feel is impossible possible. And by addressing the whole person, not just uh, treating the test results, we're able to glean those healing opportunities, those pearls for them, those clues that help us to resolve all of those things once and for all for them too. So, you know, the whatever the, the issue is, I just encourage you guys to ask yourself, well, why is that happening in the first place? Because again, going back to that concept of like, our body doesn't just wake up one day and decide to have SIBO or decide to have parasites or decide to have a thyroid imbalance or something else going on. Um, those things happen over time as a result of this cumulative metabolic chaos, this dysfunction within the metabolic processes that has been going on. And we need to resolve that in, in order to truly get real results that are long and long term and sustainable for people. 100 percent. 100 percent. It's fantastic. So if you guys are just watching or you're watching the replay, make sure to drop the word gut into the chat and we are going to send you a link for next week, week's webinar. Jen and Reed are going to be teaching you a whole hour about gut, SIBO, dysbiosis, bacteria, bacterial imbalances. So make sure to drop the word gut into the chat. Marilyn Miles wants to know how does she get an appointment? Awesome, Marilyn. Well, we will reach out to you, message back to you, and we can give you some instructions on how to do that. Fantastic. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining us. Thank you, Jen, for hopping on with me today. And if you're watching the replay, drop the word gut. Also, we will be back here same time next week, same place. Um, thank you guys for joining us today, and we hope you have a fantastic Tuesday. Bye, everybody. Bye.